Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. The mermaid LARPing military strategist Kokomi is getting her rerun in the second half of patch 2.5. In this video, I'll be going over a bunch of things to moisten your palate for Kokomi's grand return. Kokomi is both one of the most scorned characters, but also, ironically lately, one of the most beloved characters now in Genshin Impact. When she was released, the entire community was mocking her for her inability to crit and her low damage output. However, that was extremely short-sighted. And you know what else is short-sighted? The segue into today's sponsor. Anvil Vault Breakers. If you're looking for the next big isometric roguelike action shooter game, then this is the perfect game for you. Anvil is available on Steam and Xbox and supports cross-platform co-op. Fans of Diablo, Path of Exile, and Lost Ark will absolutely love Anvil as you blast through alien galaxies and loot vaults to upgrade your breakers. Choose from one of the 12 breakers available, ranging from gunners that throw landmines to berserkers that smash everything. Anvil is currently in early access on Steam and on Game Preview on Xbox. Also, Anvil is designed to never get old with three month long seasons to keep content perpetually fresh. Each new season and update will add tons of content, like new difficulty levels, and in March for example, new gameplay modes like the upcoming journey mode, and even a new breaker. Anvil supports multiple languages like Vietnamese, Italian, and Thai, which will all be added. So if you didn't understand this video in English but are fluent in those other languages, look forward to that in Anvil. So what are you waiting for? Smash that link down below like it's an Anvil to get started on your galactic journey today with Anvil Vault Breakers. Kokomi came right after Raiden, Yomiya, and Ayaka's releases, who are all powerful DPS characters. And before Ayaka, we also had Kazuha, who is literally arguably the best support character in the entire game. Kokomi had huge fins to fill following these four monstrosities. As such, people were conditioned back then to feel the need for characters to be able to do huge amounts of damage or to provide insane support capabilities. So when Kokomi came along and started hitting things like a wet noodle and providing the rarely needed excessive healing, most people were quick to dismiss her. And although it took literally months, the community has finally honed in on what makes Kokomi me a surprisingly great character. The first super interesting thing to note is that Kokomi's customer satisfaction rate is really high. In this community poll I posted, roughly 70% of Kokomi owners are very happy with their Kokomi. 16.7% of the poll's respondents are somewhat happy, and a rather low 13.3% are actually unhappy with owning Kokomi. Although I haven't done polls for other character satisfaction rates, around 86.7% of Kokomi owners being happy with her is quite impressive. Now it's worth noting that in this poll's respondents, a nice 69% of them don't have Kokomi, which is just like the amount of you guys not subscribed to my channel, so quick reminder you can ruin that by smashing that subscribe button. And another interesting tidbit of information, back in patch 2.3, Kokomi had a fairly high usage rate of 61.6% in the biz 12, and now in patch 2.4, the current patch, Kokomi has a stellar 75% usage rate, being the 5th most used character for 2.4's Abyss 12. As we can see, Kokomi has had a stellar performance and usage rates for quite some time now. Why exactly does Kokomi have a high customer satisfaction rate and usage rate? In order to answer that, we'll need to dive into her pros and cons. I'm going to start with the single most defining thing about Kokomi from a gameplay perspective that makes her who she is, and that is her jellyfish. Kokomi's jellyfish is the most unique and useful part of her kit as of today. Starting off, Kokomi's jellyfish is able to provide tons of healing for the on-field character. Even when Kokomi is built for doing more damage, her jellyfish will rarely leave you craving for more healing. It also has the lowest cooldown for an elemental skill that heals a lot. On top of that, Kokomi can refresh her jellyfish's duration by using her burst, which can extend its duration for up to 24 seconds. Then once her jellyfish expires, you can throw down another jellyfish for 36 seconds of jellyfish action. This actually makes it possible to have 100% uptime on her jellyfish, but more practically this makes it trivial to have 36 seconds of jellyfish action. This makes her one of the best quality of life characters from a healing perspective in the entire game. 
Now 30 seconds of off-field constant large heals may not sound like that big of a deal, and in Genshin Impact's metagame that's actually true. So let's also see why else it's so powerful. Kokomi's Jellyfish ticks every 2 seconds and unfortunately does negligible damage, but very importantly it applies Hydro every single tick. This makes it the single most reliable, longest lasting, and consistent Hydro applicator with a respectable AoE in the entire game. Mona's off-field AoE Hydro applicator, in comparison, can only apply Hydro for a few seconds, and her burst takes up a ton of screen time, whereas Kokomi's burst is comparatively very quick for refreshing the jellyfish. Now the super long persistent hydro application of her jellyfish leads to her being one of the best tenacity of the Millilith users in the entire game. And the fact that she can equip the thrilling tales of dragon slayers which also boosts her entire kit's efficiency means that she can provide any single character of choice a 68% attack buff. Now one might wonder how exactly do all these traits about a simple jellyfish actually make Kokomi good thanks to her role consolidation of healer and off-field freeze enabler, Kokomi becomes one of the best enablers for freeze in the entire game, and two of the best DPS characters happen to utilize freeze, Ayaka and Ganyu, but we're mostly going to focus on Ayaka in this video. Ayaka's freeze teams often suffer from either having no healer, or not the best damage amplification options. This Mona variant leaves Mona with no healer, and this Diona variant drops Shenhe, who is an insane cryo damage amplifier. Now you can run this team which has no healers, and you can absolutely get by, but mistakes with this composition becomes much more costly. And who perfectly addresses this problem? Why it's Coco. By using Kokomi instead of Mona, we now have an AoE Hydro Applicator, a healer, and a buffer all in one. And Kokomi actually has her advantages over Mona even from a freeze perspective because of her much longer lasting Hydro Application. Kokomi takes the same or less screen time for significantly more Hydro Application than Mona. Mona's burst does indeed amplify damage far more than Kokomi does, but the fact that Kokomi has much more persistent Hydro Application and provides the extra comfort through her OP healing makes her a very valuable addition and comfort pick to any freeze team. While we're on the subject of teams, there's a somewhat recently popularized Sukokomon team which uses Sucrose, Fischl, and Xiangling. This team relies on activating a ton of elemental reactions thanks to all the off-field elemental application from Frillish, Teddy Ursa, and Zapdos, and their trainer Sucrose swirling them all together. This team is great for its accessibility thanks to the lack of other 5 stars, unlike the aforementioned Freeze team. I've personally not used this team much so I cannot attest for how powerful it is, but if you have experience with it, let me know in the comments below. Another great asset for Kokomi is that she is rather cheap to build. If you use Kokomi as purely a jellyfish bot, she can be minimally invested into with literally a level 1 refinement 5 thrilling tales of dragon slayers and any 4 piece tenacity of the middle of it. And she'll still provide all the utility that you need, which is freeze, some heals, as well as a 68% attack buff. Level her up a bit and slap on some HP% percent artifacts and healing% percent circlet and now you will have giant heals as well. Now I personally recommend investing a bit more into her with an HP% percent timepiece, a hydro damage goblet, and a healing% percent circlet. This allows her to do non-negligible amounts of damage when you want her to and she will also provide thick heals for your entire team. Also, Kokomi has a negative 100% crit rate, so it's actually good for building her because now you don't have to worry about the rare crit stats. Next, let's talk about her damage. In no world, unfortunately, is Kokomi's damage going to be considered top tier, but it's surprisingly non-negligible. Unlike other healers who need to sacrifice their healing potency for damage, Kokomi doesn't lose much healing with a DPS build. This allows her to output her damage while also healing a ton, and thus makes her a great user of the Ocean Hue Clam. The Ocean Hue Clam is a great way to do some non-negligible damage for a rather low investment, and while Kokomi's damage isn't going to be breaking any DPS metrics, it's great to see her do some reasonable damage while also healing your entire team. Of course, this is all during Kokomi's burst, as outside her burst, she does almost no damage at all. Unfortunately, this is the perfect opportunity to also talk about her signature weapon, the Everlasting Moonglow, which is essentially just focused on increasing her damage output and helping a little bit with her burst uptime. Sadly, this is not a good use of Primo Gems, and while it does improve Kokomi's damage if you do plan to play Kokomi as the main damage dealer, you can get so much more damage from other weapons for other characters like the Mist Splitters for Forge for Ayaka or the Engulfing Lightning for Raiden. Also, this weapon is nearly completely useless on all the other characters besides Kokomi. 
Now, I saw a lot of comparisons between the quality of life and comfort that Kokomi provides with the quality of life and comfort that Zhongli provides, and I do somewhat agree with this sentiment. Kokomi's jellyfish heals a ton, so as long as you don't eat huge amounts of damage, you're basically immortal while her jellyfish is up and you're in the radius, and it has amazing uptime. Also, Kokomi is great for swapping onto the field to eat some damage because she is built with high HP, and during her burst she gains additional poise, which helps her to not get knocked around as easily. All these traits makes her an incredibly comfortable character to run. However, it's worth noting that similar to Zhongli, Kokomi is rarely the best option for damage amplification for your team, especially when Mona exists. But also similar to Zhongli, most people are going to appreciate all the nice comfort and quality of life that she provides to any team that she's on. Her reliability also makes her a great on-field driver for other off-field DPS characters, somewhat similar to Raiden. My personal preference is running Kokomi with Xingqiu and Fischl, and then an animal character like Kazuha. Kokomi and Xingqiu help battery each other, and Xingqiu is able to amplify Kokomi's damage, and finally Fischl doesn't really care too much about energy because she can always use Oz. I know that this team isn't considered meta or top tier, but it's how I personally enjoy using Kokomi. Kokomi's reliability thanks to her increased poise and Ching Cho's increased poise really turns her into a tank and spank team driver. Alright, so I've covered the main points that need extensive elaboration, so now it's time for some bonus points and a summary of her pros and cons. First of all, she is Genshin Impact's Jesus, and is able to walk on water during her burst. Kokomi has very high customer satisfaction rate at around 86.7%. Kokomi is super reliable and is a comfort character like Zhongli, but on the healing side. Kokomi is cheap to build as you can slap on terrible HP% percent main set artifacts in any healing percent circlet, and Kokomi is a great thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers user, which is super accessible to everyone. Kokomi is one of the best tenacity users in the entire game in terms of uptime, and thus Kokomi is a great and reliable buffer as she provides a formidable 68% attack buff thanks to the thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers and the tenacity of the Millilith. All of these traits make her a very free to play friendly character. Kokomi can also use the prototype Amber to great effect, and she's a good user of the Hakushin Ring. Kokomi is both an off-field healer and an on-field healer, easily able to overheal as well as to counter corrosion. Kokomi's increased poise along with other additional poise providers like Xingqiu make her a great and reliable driver for off-field DPS characters. Kokomi is very tanky thanks to her healing and high HP pool. Kokomi provides extremely good role consolidation of healer, off-field hydro applicator, team driver, non-negligible on-field DPS, tank, as well as buffer all in one. Thanks to that role consolidation, she is one of the best supports for the Ayaka plus Shenhe core. Kogumi's best trait is her long-lasting off-field AoE Hydra application with an accessible 36 second duration through her jellyfish, and she has the lowest cooldown elemental skill based heal, that still heals a lot, in the game. Kokomi has great on-field Hydra application, and although it's mostly single target, she'll really help with destroying pyro elemental shields like the pyro abyss lectors. The ocean heal clam also provides cheap additional DPS for your Kokomi, and Kokomi has fast animations as both her E and Burr are quick to cast. Thanks to essentially not being able to crit, her damage is very consistent and it also makes her easier to build, and her normals have some decent attack range. Kokomi's constellations are absolutely not needed for most people for doing what she does best, and Kokomi also has a solid 4 star focus composition with Sukokomon. And last but not least, Kokomi doesn't work well with Bennett, thus almost forcing him onto the other team. And one of the best speedrunning teams nowadays includes Kokomi, which is Aika, Kokomi, Kazuha, and Shenhe. Now let's talk about her cons. Kogumi feels very low impact in comparison to characters that clearly do a ton of damage or clearly buff damage by a lot. Kogumi is almost never the best option purely for damage amplification because Mona exists. Kogumi's personal damage is rather low, although it is not negligible. And of course her flawless strategy passive makes it so she essentially cannot crit. In terms of using Kokomi as a driver, there are much more higher DPS drivers like Child and Raiden, and Kokomi does not provide a ton of power gain for your account in comparison to the Primo gem spent, especially in comparison to other characters like Constellation 2 Raiden or Constellation 2 Kazuha, etc etc. Kokomi's best team requires literally 4 limited 5 star characters in Aika, Kokomi, Kazuha, and Shenhe, and Kokomi's constellations don't do much 
besides amplify her damage output, which is generally not what people are using Kokomi for. Her signature weapon, the Everlasting Moonglow, is sadly one of the worst weapons in the entire game, as it focuses just on amplifying Kokomi's low damage and doesn't provide anything for any other character. Kokomi does have burst energy issues, and her jellyfish cannot be moved until you're able to recast it. Kokomi's normal attacks also have tiny AoE, and while it was a pro earlier, not working with Ben is also a problem, because it also makes it much harder to draw out the full potential of other characters that Kokomi might want to be partied with, like Sheng Ling. So before wrapping this video up, I did want to give some advice on whether you should pull for Kokomi or not. I'm going to be brutally honest, but if you don't plan to run Ayaka, Kokomi is still not a character I would recommend pulling for in general. Despite not recommending her without Ayaka though, Kokomi is a character where it's hard to go wrong with if you do get her. I think Kokomi is a solid character and will provide you with a ton of quality of life and reliability that is literally non-existent in any other character. Other healers simply don't provide the same role consolidation that Kokomi me provides. All in all, Kokomi has truly surprised us all, as she has finally grown above and beyond our expectations. I am personally really happy to see her make it this far, and to me, this is a beautiful tale of an underdog that found her place in the brutal landscape of the Genshin Impact meta. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.